Welcome everyone, Steve Ankerstar here. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in. Uh, sorry about the technical difficulties earlier. Uh, welcome to the third quarter of 2023 and uh, for the investment advisory brief. Thanks to my team members for helping put this together. Uh, we're going to talk about what's happened so far in 2023 up to this point, kind of a straight up market, especially in technology. But more importantly, we're going to talk about what's the forecast for the rest half of this year and then on, on into uh, 2024, which there is some debate about, right? So uh, we're going to peel that back and give you what information that we think is going to happen. There's a standard disclaimer. Uh, we'll go ahead and pause on that if you need to read that or check it out. It's available at anchorstarwealth.com as well. So overall, uh, here's what we do for you here at Anchor Star Wealth. Uh, we you know, make you as much money as possible you can within the risk tolerance that you have. We coach you and mentor, mentor you through the volatile times that there inevitably appear in the markets. And last, to uh, provide long-term financial estate and, of course, tax planning different than your CPA that does tax reaction, right? Trying to get in front of, front of the uh, the tax tail out there. But what you can see there at the bottom, our promise to you as always is rapid response to client concerns. You get us your questions, we get you the answers. I shoot for 24 hours, even when we're on the road, like you can see this beautiful background uh, behind me is in Chicago. Uh, even on the road, we're gonna get to those answers. We got Jaden holding everything, holding the fort down at home. All right, let's look at uh, where the book is as an overview. Uh, all-time highs. So that's fantastic. This says uh, is as of a few days ago, we're 63,921,000 and change. So up significantly uh, for the year, we'll show you the return on investment charts here in a little bit. Uh, but when you take a look at the assets that we manage, 68% is basically true assets under management. Uh, we have 14%, almost 15% assets under advisement, which is like 401ks. Uh, thrift savings plan, those sorts of vehicles. And then alternatives, we have a pretty strong presence in alternatives uh, now up to 7.5%. Again, that keep, kind of keeps going higher as uh, overall uh, the average client net worth goes up from the money we're making. Uh, when you make more money, you're going to be more enticed into alternative type style investments like the Blackstone, uh, Bcred, and Bread become very attractive because they just kick off cash over time and they aren't really uh, faced with the volatility of the overall market like everything else is. Uh, that middle column there, the standard investments, again, TD Ameritrade is still around. This is our last quarter that we're finally done with TD Ameritrade, so I'm pretty fired up about that. Uh, but overall, equities uh, down a little bit from previous, so the bold is the current allocation. The in parentheses is the previous quarter's allocation, so a slight decrease in equity, a slight increase in ETFs, and pretty much everything's the same across the board. Uh, we do have an increase in options. That we haven't talked a lot about options uh, as far as investments uh, for doing covered calls. But remember, when a market screams higher like it has, that's a good place to put that covered call out there because you know people are willing to pay us for that because they think the market's going to scream higher forever. That's not how it works. Uh, I do think we'll have a little bit of reversion, to the, especially in the high-flying names uh, that we've had uh, in, up to date in this point. So that's why you see a little more options position. Uh, as far as alternative investments, you know about the top ones, but I will talk briefly about the bottom one. Uh, Keith Buchanan and his team at Capital Partners, uh, they have a very attractive investment down in New Braunfels where they're putting in uh, you know, a whole development, if you will. So I have the details for that if you would like to. Uh, like to participate or like to learn more to decide if you want to participate. They have not set the closing date yet. So those that have kind of pledged money, uh, you don't need to worry about it yet. We'll come up with that money once they have a, a closing date. And then that's when we'll get some paperwork out. We'll sign it and move on from there. Again, that's a limited uh, partnership. They are looking for 100000 minimum. You do have to be an accredited investor, so it's not for everybody. But if that's something that interests you, give me a call and we can talk you through it. Okay, uh, top 10 holdings in the book, Apple best company in the world. Uh, again, just uh, continues to, sorry for the typo and the ticker there. AAPL is the uh, ticker symbol, but it's, uh, you know, really, you know, it's a $3 trillion firm, right? Tim Cook's doing an amazing job. I don't see that changing anytime soon. They do have the new headset that's out, or it's not really out. It's going to be coming out. So there's a wait list for it right now. We'll see uh, VR and AR has been kind of a problem child for all of the tech firms that have tried it. Uh, but if anybody's going to crack that nut, it's going to be Apple. And of course, if they do, that opens a whole new world of potential applications, right? So we're very excited about what's going, what has happened at Apple and what's uh, going forward. Second one there is just a high yield fund. Rates are you know high because the Fed raised them 10 times last year. So 
you know, why not just have your money instead of sitting in cash, have it take advantage of that. So again, that's our second holding that's up three spots from last quarter. Amazon up one spot from last quarter, uh, just kicking butt like it always does. Google is dropped to now fourth where it was number two. Uh, not that Google's doing anything wrong, just the other names have screened higher uh, from here. We also have large exposure to JEPI, that JP Morgan Equity Premium Income. Again, how that works, it is exposure to the S&P 500. But it also uses an advanced option strategy to make money on top of those holdings, right? So it's kind of like a, the S&P 500 plus, right? It's been kicking off, you know, double digit percent uh, for some time now. Do not expect that to continue <laughs> because when volatility, volatility eventually goes down, the, the, their ability to generate all that income with options is going to be reduced as well. So it's been a fantastic holding for us. We'll have some exposure to it for some time, but don't expect like, you know, that that's a place where I'm going to take some of those funds and allocate it elsewhere. So the position is going to drop on our top 10 list. Uh, B-Cred, we already kind of talked about kicking off 8% and uh, kicking butt even on top of that 8%. So uh, love everything Blackstone's putting out as far as their credit fund. Uh, that. Uh, number seven there, your Vanguard short-term bond fund. We will be reducing that position. Um, we are trying to take now short-term duration from the Fed pushing up interest rates. You know, we'll show you the yield curve a little bit later, but that has given us an opportunity in the short term. Now that they've either paused for good or there's maybe one or two more rate hikes, we can now want to lengthen duration, right, to kind of capture that uh, the yield that's out here now for a longer term. So we'll be getting out of BSV or reducing exposure to it uh, going forward. Uh, Cyber and Sky, number eight and 10 there, again, are thematic ETFs. ROBT for uh, AI is also in one of our thematic ETFs. All of those have done fantastic this year. Cannot complain at all. Uh, those were the dogs, if you will. Those are the ones nobody was happy with in 2022. But they're back, and that's why we're investing them. The last one, BND, uh, total bond market may increase its exposure to that as uh, investment grade bonds have been kind of out of favor, but now we'll start coming back in favor as rates stabilize. Okay, here's our investment themes. If you remember during 2022, everything up here was in red except for a couple names. Well, now everything's in green except for a couple names. Uh, so really want to just talk to the ones that aren't in green here. Uh, investment grade bonds have struggled while interest rates have been increased. Again, 10 straight rate hikes, but then the Fed paused in June. Uh, we'll see what happens for the rest of this year, but overall, I'm very comfortable. We're basically buy and hold of individual bonds. Uh, we do have the BND and BFV also out there kind of generating some income for us, but we're moving out of those. Uh, preferred securities have kind of gotten killed in that rate move higher. I don't plan on moving back into those at all, if you will. Uh, so mostly investment grade bonds. Over in the financials, you know, the banks got hit, you know, in a huge way because of the, you know, Silicon Bank failure and the whole thought that that might trickle through the entire financial industry like it did in 2007 through 2009. That has not been the case. I was never worried about that. I don't worry about that going forward. I think the big banks and the regionals are a complete buy. We have Schwab in the book. We also have KRE, which is the regional index fund uh, in the book. Over to the right-hand side, the starting lineup. Again, if you are a credit investor or you want exposure to private equity, B credit and B rate are good places to have your money. We have enhanced income if you're living, especially if you're living out of your portfolio. Portfolio, uh, it's generating cash. You want to now take uh, Jeppy and Jep Q are the places to be. We do have dividend kings or dividend uh, investments out there. K and G is a dividend investment fund. Uh, aristocrats, if you will. That's why the king, you know, K and G ticker. But it also does a enhanced enhanced um, income premium, similar to Jeppy and Jep Q, where they took the natural yield, which was around three percent, and and now are now using option strategy to get that up to eight percent. So that's going to be kicking off eight percent. So you're going to see that uh, in there as well. D O double G. That's the dogs of the Dow strategy. That's fairly new as of last quarter. Uh, we moved into that pretty good. It has not done much of anything yet. So I ask for your patience here. Uh, but it, the dogs of the Dow strategy, as you know, the Dow Jones and just still average is made up of the top 30, um, you know, stocks that are picked to get put in it. And then uh, the dogs are the bottom 10. It takes the bottom 10 of those stocks, you know, the out of favor stocks, if you will, and invests in them. So it's a contrarian type investment strategy. 
that's what you do when the market is run up, especially in certain areas like technology has, is you look for other places that have been left behind. This is our left behind strategy. So when we think that the rest of the market's gonna catch up, DOGG is how we're gonna do it. Uh, the themes out there we already talked about, except for the one that's all the way to the right, which is OSEA, that's an overseas type fund. Uh, I stayed clear of international investing largely for the past you know, five to seven years. But as the United States kind of snaps back out of this interest rate increase and then, you know, if rates stabilize or even drop, it's going to go even higher. I also want uh, exposure to uh, the overseas markets that are kind of doing the same thing, but they're lagging behind the U.S., right? So uh, there's an opportunity there. Uh, best of breed has not changed. Uh, new and um, we just talked about quarter one, Schwab and KRE. Quarter two, the OSEA we added. I will talk more here in a bit about MicroStrategy and what the investment thesis is there, and then DOGG we already talked about. Um, Bitcoin pure play, we'll see. Uh, identifying undervalued tech, that's a little bit of a, that's a, that's a tough nut to crack, right? Because um, we're doing it a little bit through DOGG, which is companies like Intel, uh, which are like, okay, Intel's old tech. It's like, well, Intel's not as bad as, you know, people think it is, right? So there's opportunity there. And then, of course, the big question mark is digging through all of the technology out there and finding the next, next best thing. Our team's out there looking. I do not have any promises for you here, but that's what we are looking for. All right, overall growth of the book. This is just the Schwab number, so it's not the overall book because the overall book's at, you know, 60-some million. You're only looking at 40 uh, million here, so it's really two-thirds of the book, but they produce the best graphics, so we'll go with those. Uh, overall, the book's up 25%, so you can kind of see the breakdown below that, but when you really, when you look at the return, of the whole S&P, you've got IT, uh, information tech, 39% in the first half, uh, telecom, 36%, you know, consumer discretionary, 29%, and then us, and then everything else. Uh, if you were just, you know, why have an advisor, why, why invest through through a, an investment firm? Well, S&P market weighted is at 15%. If you do the equal weighted cap, it's down at 5%. Uh, when you look at the S&P 500, you have 500 stocks, seven of which have been kicking butt. And, you know, do the quick math, that means 493 are in a slow yawn, to be honest. So, uh, you know, it's been just the workhorse type market. And fortunately, we're invested in, in four of the seven there. Uh, but, you know, and there's even things in the red all the way down through energy. It's been a terrible performer uh, when everything else is making money. So those that are sitting back going, hey, make sure you're in Exxon Mobil because that's going to get you a good dividend. Well, fantastic. You're down 7% in a straight up market. So I cannot do that or support that thesis. All right. We'll talk about the earlier about the treasury yield curve. So don't want to spend too much on this slide, but it is really imperative that you kind of understand that the short term is driven by the Federal Reserve, the long term interest rates are driven by the market. Okay, there's your degree in economics, right? So um, they, they can talk, they have whole courses on this. <laughs> so when you look at that blue line with the dot at the top, it is kind of peaking out for a year, right? Because we're up above 5%. That's because the Fed has raised the short term rate to above 5%. That's why our rates are there. So if you think of a tent, if you will, and a, you know, a flat cloth top. Well, the Fed has a pole, if you will, and is pushing up that tent at the, you know, six month to one year mark above 5%. And the rest of the market is going, no, it's not going to stay there, right? You take the pole away and the market based rates would be much, much lower. You can see the other two lines that are on there are two years ago from July of 2021 is it's, it's at the bottom, you know, 0% for out to a year. That's where your bank was paying you nothing. Uh, the middle line there is last summer, July of 2022, right? Kind of half to where we are now. So what's, what's going to happen going forward? Well, the prediction is, my prediction is that the Fed is done raising rates. That is not the mainstream media's opinion. Everybody else, including Chairman Powell himself, is talking about one or two more rate hikes out of necessity. I think that would be dumb. Uh, of course, they can do it. So, you know, you don't go all in on, on a call. But I'm saying they don't. I think they're done in June. I think it will cause more destruction uh, than it would solve. However, if they do, it's already baked into the market. So you're not going to see the market have a huge reaction to, I mean, we went from zero to 5% in a year. Uh, going to 5.25% is not going to make anybody lose any sleep, unless maybe you're a talking head. Uh, but 
the market's not going to care. Even if it goes to five and a half percent, the literal market, the market is literally not going to care. But look at the long term. So that long term out to the 30 year, now you're getting some decent return. So what we want to talk about is increasing duration of the, I think we have might have another slide out of it. We don't. Um, so right now with CDs are popular, you know, somebody just signed on today and they're like, what can you do for me? And I'm like, I can get you above 5% for out to a year maybe a year and a half, I'll have to look, right? Because it's right in between those two. Um, but I can't get that forever. So there comes a time, which is now, to where you say, okay, I could get 5.2% now, or I could get 4.9% for the next five years. Uh, those are not exact numbers, that's an example. But you would take less now because you wanna lock in for longer. That's the concept of increasing duration. So if you hear us talking about that, moving out on the yield curve, trying to lock in the current rates for longer. That's all anticipation that rates are not going to be this high three to five years from now. So that is the overall strategy. All right, the next one, this scares some people because you have to say words like cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. Well, uh, I, I believe, right? And here's why. I, and I don't necessarily believe in it for a hundred year play. I don't know the end of the story, but I will say in the short term, uh, you are looking at a setup that is potentially... Uh, for it has the potential, excuse me, for Bitcoin to go much higher. So why Bitcoin versus the rest of crypto? Rest of crypto? Bitcoin has a finite number of coins that will ever be mined, right? 21 million, I think, is the, is the official number. All the other crap coins, as I call them, and many others do too, I didn't make that up, uh, they can be manipulated, right? So like a stock, if you have somebody that issues stock out there, but then they can just keep issuing stock, well, you have no idea how to value your stock because they could always issue more and screw up the price. So that's where Bitcoin differs. Second, the legislation that's out there right now, the SEC has taken it upon itself to go after Coinbase and some others that are out in the field. Well, when you look at about the, you know, SEC stands for Securities Exchange Commission. Well, is crypto a security? They don't register it as, as a security. They won't allow anybody to do that because then you could have a Bitcoin ETF. So the Securities Exchange Commission won't let you, won't acknowledge that it's an, a security, right? But yet they feel compelled to bring legislation against you. It's like, well, if it's not a security, how do you think you have the authority to drop these lawsuits? It's a debacle. And it's a debacle of major proportions. If you've been following like BlackRock uh, filed for a Bitcoin ETF, they were denied. They just filed it again today. I mean, they're, they're making the point, right? They're like, you, you cannot stop this thing and legislate it all at the same time. It either is security and you are within your right to do it, or it's not a security and you need to butt out. Either way, if it's legitimized through the SEC finally saying it's a security, Bitcoin ETFs will pop up, they will get funded with a lot of money, and Bitcoin goes higher, okay? Because there's a finite number, more people want them. If the SEC stands pat, turns it down, says, hey, it's not a security, you guys can't do any of this stuff, one of the core theses of Bitcoin is, in crypto, is that you can't trust the U.S. government, and you can't trust the dollar. And there's all kinds of talk out there. People get emails all day long and send them to me about the government's going to have a digital dollar. No, they're not. Um, it's kind of digital anyway, because most of our transactions are digital. But the, either way, Bitcoin wins in these scenarios. And I do not see a third scenario. If you do, put it in the chat, send me an email. I don't see a third scenario. Either way, Bitcoin goes higher. So whether or not you believe that Bitcoin is going to be around you know, 30 years from now, that's irrelevant. Even positioned to where it is at 30,000. 31 and change. I, th I think it's below 31 today. Um, it's the place to be. So how to get exposure to it? We can't, right? Because the SEC says we can't. Uh, so the best way to position is MSTR. It's a software services firm led by Michael Saylor, the CEO. He's a Bitcoin maximalist uh, that believes in Bitcoin and nothing else. Uh, that's the way to play it for now. Once we either get an ETF or we're able to, that bottom line, our fidelity comes out. Uh, with the ability to buy Bitcoin through a brokerage, we're going to do that. Until then, we're not doing it. Uh, the, only, the only people that have exposure to this are your aggressive risk folks and higher. So if you're in a conservative or moderate risk, you will not have exposure to this. If you are aggressive, though, you will have exposure to this, unless you call me and tell me specifically to take you out of that. And then I will say, 
did you listen to this briefing on why we're in it? And let's stick with it. And that's how much I believe on this one. So uh, that's why we're in it. Uh, the book at the bottom, of Truth About Crypto. Uh, each of the advisors on the team have that here. Uh, Alice and I went to a dinner with Rick Edelman uh, when he was in Austin a couple of weeks ago. We listened to this in person. Uh, you know, we came back. I read read the first half of the book, processed it. I believe. I think he's right. So that's why we're invested. In it. Okay. Overall, down to the forecast, and then we'll close out three minutes or less. I promise. Um, you know, our quarter two review is pretty much spot on. I said the market's going to have, or the Fed is going to have the last rate hike. They did, and the market went higher. I only have a couple of times in my life where I felt strongly about where the market's going to go. One was the, you know, lock and load brief on March 24th of 2020, where I said the market just is not going to drop more than 35% during COVID. It didn't. I was one day early. Uh, I was, I had the right quarter here. I had the wrong, you know, I thought it'd be early in the quarter, but it was late in the quarter. And again, I don't think they're going to turn around and uh, do that. Uh, inflation is coming down. There are still people crying about it, but it's trending in the right direction and couldn't be happier. And the banks are plenty stable, despite what everybody's saying. There was just a stress test that came out like last week and the banks are fine. Um, for the rest of 2023, it'll kind of depend on, depend on the Fed. Uh, they could mess things up by raising high, rate hikes even more if they need to. But even if they do, I think it's 25 or 50 basis points. I'm not really worried about it. On into, uh, you know, there's the rest of the uh, the forecast for the first half. Again, uh, not too worried about the rest of the year, but I would not turn around and expect it to go up 20, 30 percent again. Right. Uh, the story of two nevers. It's important to understand that something's going to break here. Uh, we've never had an inverted yield curve, which I just showed you where short term rates are above long term rates. We've never had that and not had a recession. Right. We've also never had a recession with full employment. One of those two is not going to be true. We don't know when, we don't know if it's in two months or six months, but it, one of those two can't still be a never. So it's a battle of two nevers. Uh, again, I think full employment's gonna save the day. I don't think we're gonna have a recession. Mainstream media does. Uh, most of them are people are calling a mild recession. I call that kind of a non-answer, right? If you don't know what to say, give some sort of crappy non-answer, like, oh, we might have one, and if we do, it won't be that bad. I don't know, I don't think we're having one. That's my take. Uh, but the, at the end of all this, whether that's this year, next year, what 2025, I do think we see an accelerating economy coming out of it because eventually those rate hikes are going to come back down. Uh, we've always done that. I think we will continue to do that. There will be politicians that get elected that want to look good. So they'll, you know, they'll encourage the Fed to bring rates down. And that's how I see it all uh, playing out. Um, long term, though, do not expect 20 percent a year, year over year. That happens. We're having it this year. Don't expect it year over year. Okay, last thing I'll tell you, advisor stack. This is a new thing we've signed on with. I told investors uh, earlier this week, now I'm telling the clients, it's not quite ready to roll out, but it's gonna take everything, all the software that we have for you, it's gonna package it into a you know website, single sign on website for you to go to, or right to your phone. You know, and most of us live on our phone, right? So right to your phone, you're gonna have everything that we have for you is going to be available to you at a just glance at your phone. Whether you check it, you know, 100 times a day or check it once a month, it's going to be there anytime you want that answer. Again, the long-term strategy is we are trying to bring information to you as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Uh, that's, you know, one of our core tenets is to, is to try to really use technology and deliver that to you. So very excited about it. Um, and again, we should be rolling that out, I think, in a couple of weeks. But, you know, tech is tech, right? So we're not going to roll it out until it's ready. You have my word on that. So by the time you get it, everything's going to be working. And uh, I'm very excited to get it out, but I'm also patient enough to make sure that the rollout needs to uh, be a home run. All right. That is all I've got for you guys. Thank you so much for uh, listening in. Again, sorry for these uh, right around the 4th of July. These always are tough. Uh, but if you have any questions, let me check the chat real quick. Didn't see any come in here. Uh, no questions in the chat. So again, thanks again for listening in, and we will catch you next time. Talk to you soon.